My name is Torsten Orgard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will tell you how to organize your photos from your iPhone or from film scans or any photos on your computer, how to organize it. If you have looked around on your iPhone or on your computer recently, you will see that you have accumulated quite a few documents, emails, videos, photos and it's just kind of floating around and probably you have some kind of system to find it when you need it and sometimes you can find it, sometimes you can't, sometimes you lost it, sometimes you didn't. My aim is to help you try to get this organized. It's not necessarily uh, something you can just do in five minutes, it takes well, it takes courage, it takes a little bit of know-how and it takes working step by step to get it organized and then once you have that then you actually have a system that's going to help you in the future. And you will need that because chances are you're just going to accumulate more and more and more. So once you remember you had a few hundred pictures and then you had a few thousand and suddenly you have 10,000 or 20,000 or more than 100,000 pictures and video files what do you do with it? How do you find it? There's a system to that and it's something that I have done uh, workshops in. I also done like my Lightroom survival kit and my Capture One survival kit. Lightroom is an editing software, Capture One is an editing software that uh, semi-pro or professional photographers use. Basically you need it for all digital cameras and I've done manuals on like how to survive those software but also survive the whole workflow. So those survival kits, 80% of it is about how to organize uh, your workflow. It's not so much how to use the software, it's how to, how to organize your, your digital life is about. So I'll give a little uh, crash course in that and it's based on, uh, you could say, many years of experience or more than 10 years of experience with uh, working with digital cameras and digital files. Well, it's actually 20 years now, time flies. So what I have these days is I have this seemingly little hard drive. This is 4 terabyte hard drive, it's a solid state hard drive. On this one I have all uh, my final pictures. So if I want to find a picture of, uh, uh, for example, Seal at Soho Hotel in London, I can find it. If I want to find Bill Clinton in the Fair Islands, I can find him. If I want to find uh, Trump in the White House, I can find it. If I want to find a picture of my daughter or my two daughters dressed up in 19 or 1874 dresses for a Christmas shoot, I can find it. So how come I can find these things? On this one I have about 130,000 pictures that are in high resolution, they're ready for gallery printing, ready for any kind of use. So how come that amongst 130,000 pictures I can find a picture like this? The answer is simply keywords. Uh, this is actually just a backup because I have also on uh, my computer here I have the same folder with 130,000 pictures. And keywords is words you put into a picture file, you attach to a picture file. You don't see it in the picture, but it's in the digital file. I mean, there's lots of ones and zeros making up. A, a digital picture file, either you scan it or you took it with an iPhone or a digital camera, it's all digital. And in there you can put a description of the photo, you can put copyright information, you could put geotagging, where was it taken in the world, but mainly you can put in keywords. And keywords is the fundamental of finding things, is when you look at Google, you put in keywords to find something. Uh, it's also most likely how you find emails these days. You put in keywords, either the name of the sender or the subject or some word that might be in the email that's keywords. If you don't have keywords and things, the only way to find them is to go through all your emails or go through all your pictures. And you can tell that's a mess if you even ever try to have to look for something visually. It, it's just too much work and it's, sometimes you give up. So you have to have a system and the system is keywords. Key to, keywords is actually an old school thing in photography. It's long before Google. Uh, you would 
photograph on film. So for example, in uh, the 60s, 70s, when photographers were photographing out in the world, like war or something, then they would uh, develop the film in a hotel room, in the bathroom or something, and then they would make prints of it. And then they would transmit those prints via telephone, uh, a scanner that was attached to the telephone, back to Associated Press or the newspaper. And as part of the print they made of the photo, they would write who took it, what date was it, where was it, and they would write what is the story about this picture. And that would actually make up the text on the picture file, and that was called IPTC data. It's still, if you look in, in a digital picture, it's still called IPTC, so there's a container in the picture that you don't see but is in attached to the photo is IPTC and that is simply just an old school telephone code for keywords and description of a picture. And that's what your pictures have to have uh, for you to be able to find them but also for if somebody else finds your picture then they can see what's the story behind this picture, when was it taken, who is in it, uh, like when, who, what. Um, <clears throat> that's what should be in a picture. So how do you do this? Well, there's different scenarios, so let's just take the possibility. Let's take an example here of some uh, films I had scanned in uh, a scanner service in, in Denmark. We're going to use the phone later. Um, but if you go look on the computer here, then you would see here that I have a folder here with the pictures. And and this is from a long time ago, from uh, the kindergarten my kids went to. I have twins, there's a boy and a girl, they're 24 now. And back then they were like uh, six years old, so that's uh, quite some time ago. So to put in keywords in any type of digital photos, you could, uh, the, actually the best way currently is to download Lightroom uh, the standalone version. There have been different software existing that was like virtual catalogs where you could pull in photos into them and you could add keywords and write the keywords to the file. A lot of those software stopped existing uh, as Apple upgraded uh, or changed the system software they just gave up on that so it wasn't like you could say it wasn't a, a big deal. So what you need is you need to find Adobe Lightroom and it has to be classic. You, you're not going to get into a cloud software or something like this. I'll get into later why you're not going to use a cloud software and why and how you get your phone off uh, the Apple cloud or any other cloud and get them into your archive. Because that's a very important thing that you have your, have your own picture archive and you also have to have them keyworded. So you're not going to leave that to some cloud service or some software company or Apple or somebody else or Microsoft to hold your pictures. You're going to hold them yourself and you're going to make sure that they're organized, you can find them and you can use them. So here we go, Adobe Lightroom Classic and you can see there's a few choices here and you go here. So here, desktop photo editor, perfect. That's the one we want to do. And what you can do is it costs like $10 a month or something to sign up for this. Uh, you can also buy, I think, the whole uh, thing. Um, and that's actually interesting because I'm just looking here. I'm searching for a fo Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic, it's called. And what I get down here is I can get Lightroom Classic as part of Adobe Creative Cloud for $10 a month, $9.99. And even if it's Adobe Creative Cloud, it just means it's a cloud where you download the software, you can have different software, you can expand, you can have more different Adobe software. So you can also do that, but don't go into the cloud where you get the cloud version of this software. So we're going to just take a, a free trial and then you download that. I've used it a long time, so I actually do have it. Uh, here on my computer. So this is simply what we do. Here I have uh, a number of scans I got from uh, BiliScan in Denmark and then I go into uh, Adobe Lightroom and you can see here uh, 
we don't have to get into the whole software because the only thing you're using this for right now is keywording. And what you can do is that you're here in library mode and then I'm going to take my folder out here from the desktop because that's where I put it. So I have this one and you can say it's called 2007 because I give everything uh, job number so you can have a sequence I can see because it's easy to see this is folder number 2007 and it is a name because name is alphabetically and I like to have it organized in sequence so my next job number or event number is 2007 so I give it that and then I call it Billy Scan because that's the ones who scanned it and then I could say uh, kindergarten uh, and it's called first alone in Danish so I'm going to put it in just in Danish because that makes sense for me and then it's 18 years ago so it's 2003 and I just give the folder that name so when I see the folder I can see oh this is what's in the folder but the main thing we do now is I can just drag this folder into Lightroom here and you can see up here in the top it says add I can also copy and I can move but here I'm going to add and what it does is it adds folders to the catalog without moving them. So the pictures stay on my desktop for in the folder. They don't go into a software or something like that. They stay out there and I simply just say import and then it's going to import the pictures here and I'm just going to wait for it to build uh, the previews up here uh, to the left. And it's not that it's like uh, uh, amazing pictures. This is like the whole uh, film roll that was scanned, so it's like this is probably one film roll, 30 pictures, 36 pictures, here's 17, so it's some, something like that. And now when it's done with building previews, then what I can do is I can add keywords. And one important little detail is that in Lightroom I have gone in here first and I said catalog settings. And in catalog settings there's a little thing here that here you can click automatically write changes to XMP. If I unclick it says, it says warning changes made in Lightroom will not automatically be visible in other applications unless written to XMP. So what does, that, what does that mean? Well basically what that means is that anything you add to a photo, you edit a photo, you do anything in a photo in Lightroom, if you don't turn on XMP then all the changes stays in the catalog so it doesn't attach to the picture. And that's not what you want because if the software changes or it crashes or you lose your catalog, you lost all your changes, your keywords, whatever you put. So this is the important thing, that's basically the only thing you have to do is click automatically write changes into XMP. And once you do that, now any change I, I do to the picture is written to the picture file. And that's basically what XMP means, it's just a portable uh, container that goes with the picture. And it's not even next to the pictures in the picture. So keywords, uh, what I should do here is I will just say select all pictures and now I have all 17 pictures and I can over here put in my keywords and the reason I select all pictures is because first I want to put in general keywords so I can say this is 2003, it is in, uh, it's actually in Silkeborg it's in Denmark, it's kindergarten, and I can say in Danish also Bernhaven, and just in case I want to have a Danish keyword also. And it's called Fast Alone. And I guess that is uh, the general keywords. I can also say job 2007, so I can see where. Do they belong in case I just find one picture? I can say, oh, job 2007, where's the folder 2007? So I can say, this is the general keywords. And then I could go in here, I can say, this picture here is uh, Oliver. And you can see, Lightroom already knows this keyword. So I just have, as soon as I type in the first one, I suggest I say that's the one. And then I can say, Caroline. And it also knows that one, so now I have it there. So that's the keyword in this first picture. And then I can see here, uh, this is also the same. So what I can do is I can say these pictures here, they're all in. This is something else. This, 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 
this, this, this. Good. And then Caroline. Then I have something here. I don't know what it is. We'll see this one is uh, Oliver also. And he's actually in the garden. And that's the villa. Now it's something here. And it's actually Brabant. There we go. And you could say that's enough. I'll just see this one is, uh, let's just see this one is Caroline. And it's garden. Villa. And you can see Lightroom remember the keywords uh, from previously when I used the same keywords in the same catalog. Uh, and that's very helpful. You don't have to download, you can go online, you can download uh, lots of uh, keyword catalogs with thousands of different keywords, but you don't need that. The way you keyword is you want to know who it is, where it is, and when it is. So I always put in, if I have the month, I put in the month, but I put in the year of a photo, I put in who it is and I put in where it is like. And where it is, you could say it's Europe, it's Denmark, it's Brabant, or it's the garden, it's the villa, or something like that. So that's inform informative keywords. And you can say, yeah, if I need to look for that person, then I can type in the keyword. But it also means when I find the picture and I look at the keywords, I can see who is it. Because if somebody looks at this picture in 50 years or even 20 years, they might not recognize this person. They don't know who it is. They don't know what country is taking or anything. So that's part of also what you do. And often also, not in this one actually, but often in, uh, in pictures, I'll put in keywords that describe the mood. And that's basically just reverse engineering. So I have a picture of a woman on a bicycle in Berlin. So that's what I put in Berlin woman bicycle because I will kind of sort of remember the picture and I'll, I'll put in those keywords and there's the picture. I can also put in a picture and I can say sunset or I can say beauty or aesthetic and sometimes I will have like I will add a keyword uh, depth of field because I know it's a good keyword because I might need a picture to illustrate depth of field and then I type in that and that's the picture I find. So this is relative simpler. simple. I can also, in Lightroom, I can add uh, stars, colors, and all kinds of other things. I can do libraries and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is that the only thing you can say you can take with you in the picture file, the only thing that is written to the picture file, to the XMP file, is stars and keywords. And even stars, you can't be sure that it can be seen in other software. So the only thing actually is keywords. You give a color code, it might not be used for anything in the future. And certainly if you make a library or folder in Lightroom, it has no meaning outside of Lightroom. So it's kind of a waste of time because it is just a matter of a few years, then you're, gonna, you're not going to have Lightroom around anymore or there's going to be coming a new version. And it's the same, you look at past softwares um, like Apple Photos and also previous versions of Lightroom, they stopped supporting what they used to make as a standard thing that you thought, oh, this is really cool, I'm going to fix all my pictures in Apple Photos. Then comes Apple with a new edition and then suddenly it's reorganized in a different way and all the work you did is lost. So you don't do that, you kind of prepare your files that they can float around on your own hard drive and that's where you can find them. And this is how it works. So now I have all of them keyworded and I will just freestyle this one because I like that one. So now it's set to three stars. Then I can close Lightroom and then the great thing is you can see out here in the catalog that these are actually updated right now and I can go in and look here. There is uh, the keywords that are written in the file. And the great thing about a Mac or computers is that they index hard drive so they actually read the keywords just like they read uh, subjects in emails and and stuff so now you can go up and search for it up here and in the spotlight and it will show up immediately and that's how it works with keywords uh, and I can go in here I can say uh, also I can search in the folder here 
And then I can see here I have all the pictures that keep that contains this keyword. And that is uh, how you find things. It also means if I send one of those pictures in an email and I later go in and search in my email for the keywords, it will show up. So even the pictures, the keywords in pictures in emails that you receive or you send is being read and being indexed. So you could say even you don't have the the hard drive with the pictures here, even you lost it or something, if you send it in an email, you can still find it. You put it online, Google will also read the keywords and they help uh, finding it. So that's how you can index uh, picture files. That's all I had to say. If you go below the video also, you can sign up to my mailing list and you get a free ebook uh, that you can download immediately. That's all I had to say. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.